Hello. Good afternoon, Manuel. How are you, sir? Good, and you? Ah, uh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Feeling very, very vitalized this morning. Very, very vitalized. I've been out on my morning walk. Um, yeah, I'm feeling incredible, sir. I'm feeling incredible. So we will have a good one. Oh, my friend, my friend, my friend. <laughs> I have a treat in store. I have a treat in store. When I walk, it allows my mind to clear and the thoughts just seem to come flooding. I have to hurry home to start writing down. So yes, I have a treat in store for everyone. I have an action plan today. Phil, good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, as you guys know, I never really run. I never really allow too much time for those that are running late. But we are dead on time, so I'm going to give maybe just a minute or so. So let me just adjust my camera. There we go. I'm going to give literally just a minute or so for those that are slightly behind time because I'm sure they will be popping in. I'm sure they will be popping in. But how's everyone feeling today? Thumbs up, Phil, if you're feeling good. Can I get some yeses in the chat box if you guys are feeling good? If you guys have nourished your minds and if you guys are feeling wonderful? Yvonne, Yvonne, good morning. Lovely to see you here. Okay, so I know Phil's feeling good. Is Phil the only one feeling good today? I'm sure Phil's not the only one feeling good. Manuel, I know you're always feeling good. Rita, I know you're always feeling good. Let's get some yes in the chat box if we are all feeling good today. Because I know I certainly am feeling incredible. I'm not feeling good, I'm feeling incredible. As every day, I'm feeling incredible, but I'm feeling inspired and I want to deliver um, a masterclass for you today. I'm not just going to deliver information, I'm going to deliver an action plan. I'm going to deliver actionable points that you guys can take away and implement. And I want you to do something today to implement your new plan. Okay, so we are one minute past the hour. So I will begin. I want to talk today, guys, about the fact that we are here to thrive and not survive. Yeah, we are here to thrive and not survive. Surviving is a case of just existing in life. And who wants to just exist? Life is for living, right? And if life is for living, we have to take responsibility. We have to do what is our duty to ensure that we live. Because I certainly know that existing is... Oh, that's so 1990s. <laughs> We're all about living now, guys. We're all about living. So as I said, it is simply a case of we're here to thrive and not survive. That's a very bold statement. But behind every bold statement has to be an actionable plan. So I hope you have a pen and paper because I will be giving some pointers today that will give you a direct course of action in order to thrive and not survive. So there are certain things in life that we can't control. There are certain things in life that are completely out of our control. And one of the things that will frustrate you more than anything is if you focus your time and energy on things that you have no control over. The things you have no control over, you have to let them go. You have to focus your time and your energy only upon the things you can control. What do I mean by that? Change is inevitable. However, growth is a choice. Remember that, guys. Change is inevitable. However, growth is a choice. So in times of change, what do you do? I've spoken about this before. You become chameleon-like. You adapt and you overcome. You change to meet your environment. You adapt and you overcome. The businesses that don't change with the landscape, they fall to the wayside. Am I right? Of course I'm right. The businesses that do not adapt to the landscape. When the internet first started to become prevalent and you saw businesses going online, the businesses that thought the internet was a, a fly by night, they flew by night, right? <laughs> They're no longer here. Some of the biggest organizations fell apart because they didn't adapt and overcome. We have to, at all times, take full responsibility for our own journey. So ultimately, it's always a case of how we respond to change that will make you incredible or make you only durable. I certainly want to be durable, 
but I want to surpass durable and become incredible. So what do I mean by is how we respond? Life does not happen to us. Life happens to you if you volunteer to be a victim of life. I've spoken about this before. In life, there are no victims, there are only volunteers. So what do you do? Well, you have to make the decision. You have to take full responsibility that you're what? That you are a creator of your life. When you adjust your perspective, when you adjust your standpoint, your position, and you take authority that you are a creator of your life, then things start to look a whole lot different. When you move the frame, take it from there and move it to there, and realize that, you, that life does not happen to you, that you create your life, sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming. Because if you're not where you are, what happens then is you could quite easily fall into a lull. You could quite easily fall into a bad state when you take responsibility, potentially for the mess that you've created. But there are two... Mm, mm, no, I nearly fell into that trap. There aren't two sides. There are three sides to every coin. I know you're thinking, Kevin, have you gone crazy? No, how are there three sides? There's heads there's tails, and there's the edge. There are three sides to every coin. When you stand on the edge, guess what, guys? You can see both sides of the coin. So let's think about that now. You can see the mess you've created, and if you focus on that, if you focus on what you don't want, if you focus on what you have that you don't like, that will put you in a very negative headspace. The flip side of the coin that side is blank and that side is blank because that's the side that you're going to create. That is the side where you have to focus your energy and your attention because when you've decided that, okay, yes, I'm now taking full responsibility for the mess that I have created. That's the past. You cannot change that, but you can learn from it. Yes, you cannot change that but you can learn from it. And when you decide to learn from it and move forward, that's when you now start focusing your energies on what you want to create. Understand and remember this, guys. The process of creation doesn't happen in a millisecond. It does take time. This is what I want you to understand. In the process of creation, do not become impatient. Because becoming impatient will lead to frustration. I'm not there quick enough. Oh, it's not happening when I want. It's not happening on my time. It never happens on your time. It never happens on your time. You have to understand that. You have to have faith that it will happen though. And what is faith, guys? Faith is the ability to see the outcome before you have any evidence. You focus on what you want. Who's ever seen that picture? I know it's been floating around on the internet for years where there's two guys digging in a tunnel and one guy stops at the very end and the other guy keeps digging. And just beyond where they were digging was the other side, was the gold. So the guy that stopped digging is the guy that lost faith, the guy that became impatient. But the other guy on the bottom, he continued to dig and he broke through. What does that tell you guys? That tells you, or that tells me, a key phrase that I once read and I really wish that I could uh, recall the, uh, the author of this phrase, but it doesn't really matter because the phrase has stuck with me anyway. If you're persistent, you will get it. If you are consistent, you will keep it. Write that down, guys. If you're persistent, you will get it. If you are consistent, you will keep it. That should be your mantra for life because all too often we can get caught up in how we feel, caught up in the fact that we're not there yet, 
caught up in the fact that things aren't happening on our time scale. Be persistent, guys. Be persistent. Stay focused on your vision. Stay focused on your outcome. Have a clear outcome in your mind. Visualize exactly where you want to go. And don't just visualize it once. Visualize it daily. Every single day. Make time to have your vision in your mind. Make time to have your vision clearly. As I, I've spoken about this before, make sure your vision is in 1080p. When you close your eyes, you should be able to step into that movie you've created in your mind. And that movie in your mind, that is the life that you want to create. Stay vigilant. And another thing I want you to remember, there are a thousand and one trails to the top of the mountain. So if you find a blockage that you can't go over, under, through, or around, change your trail because there's another trail to the top of the mountain. Don't change your outcome. Just change the trail that you're using to get there. Now, with regards to decisions, I want you to understand something very, very clearly about decisions. You have to be decisive in life. Do not procrastinate. Do not continue to just plan all your life. Make a decision, be decisive, and take immediate action. But you're thinking, yeah, but I've still got all this information I need to go through, and I need to do my due, my, my due diligence to make sure I'm making the right decision. In any given moment, do any of us know for certain that we're making the right decision? Nope. We may well have done the research. We may well have put in the due diligence. But without action, what is all of that? That's just preparation, right? Yeah, preparation is great. But you have to take action. You have to be decisive about what you're going to do. Let's think about this. So you do all the preparation in the world and you take forever to make a decision and you take forever to take action. The guy that has done the necessary amount of due diligence, he's been decisive in his decision making and he's then taken action. Even if he's on the wrong course, he's going to adapt and overcome probably before you even start if you procrastinate and if you just sit down and do your preparation. Being decisive doesn't mean you're right. Taking action doesn't mean you're right, but it will find you on the wrong course quicker than taking no action. And if you find yourself on the wrong course, what do you do? You just adjust your course. You adapt and you overcome. But you, you, you have to be decisive. You have to take action. Great leaders, what do they do? They make decisions quickly and they change their minds slowly. So they make a decision, they take action, they take immediate action, they start moving forward down that trail. And if they find, based on the results they're getting, hmm, this isn't quite exactly what I want, they just adjust course. But they move forward a lot quicker than those people that only prepare, that those people that only continuously do their due diligence oh, you know what, I have to make sure I put in enough preparation so I can get this right. It needs to be perfect. No, it doesn't. Perfection is a myth. Good is good enough. Good is good enough. Remember that, guys, that is a key phrase. Good is good enough. Because you can implement change, you can make things better along your journey. Guys, give me a thumbs up if this is resonating. Give me some yeses in the chat box if what I'm saying is making sense. If this is hitting home, if you are feeling what I'm saying, I want some yeses in the chat box, otherwise I'll stop talking. Yeah, that's how, that's how decisive I'm being today. I want some yeses in the chat box, otherwise I'll stop talking. Okay, now it looks, okay, okay. Now it looks as though we have some audience participation. Thank you, guys. Guys, I'm passionate about what I'm delivering here. And you know what? I hope it's hitting home because I know that this actionable series of uh, 
events that you can put in place will help you thrive and not survive. Another way to make sure you stay on course is to make your goal bigger than you are. What do I mean by that? If your goal is only about you, if your goal is, for example, only about you making money, when things get tough, because they will, life will always throw challenges at you. So when things get tough, if your goal is not big enough, you'll quit. And that isn't an if, but, or maybe. That is a guarantee. If your goal is not big enough, you will quit. So what you have to do is quite simple. You have to ensure that your goal involves contribution, not just to your life, but to other people's lives. So that you're helping other people. Because believe it or not, guys, that will also, if you are a person of integrity and a person of strong character and a person of good character, contributing to others will keep you accountable. I've said on more than one occasion, how often do you find you go to the lengths of the earth, those that you love, but you might not go that far for yourself? True or true? Yeah? Sometimes when it's for yourself, you might make an excuse as to, oh, you know what? I can carry on next week. I don't need it right now. But when it's for your loved ones, you will bend over backwards. You will break your back in actual fact to make sure you deliver what you said you're going to deliver, right? And why do you do that? Because you love them. Because you feel an obligation. You feel a responsibility. Especially if it's for your offspring. Oh my days. If it's for your children, that is it. There is nothing on this world, if you're a loving parent, that will stop you delivering exactly what you want your children to. Not have what you believe they need. And the vast majority of us parents, I can't say all parents because that's not true, but the vast majority of us parents, what do we want? Do we not want our children to live a better life than we did? Do we not want our children to have more? And that doesn't necessarily mean material things. We want them to have more knowledge. We want them to have more opportunities. We want them to have a better chance. We want them to have a better start. So if we include contribution in our outcome, do you think that that has a chance of making you more decisive, more passionate, more fueled to achieve your goal? Give me some thumbs up, please, guys. Give me some yes in the chat box. If I'm making sense, if this is all hitting home, oh, yes, I absolutely can do that, Phil. That's not an issue. I can, do an, I can absolutely do a masterclass on goal setting. But, um, guys, if what I'm saying is really hitting home, if what I'm saying is really making sense, you know I only deliver this to you guys. But guess what? The great thing is, when I deliver for you, I also get a huge bonus because guess what? It reminds me of what I need to do. It keeps me on track. You guys hold me accountable. Because if I didn't have to do this call, no, let me rephrase. If I didn't choose to do this call Monday to Friday, there are days when, I'll be honest, I don't feel like doing this call. There are days when I haven't had the inspiration and it might be half an hour before my call and I think, oh, what am I talking about today? Do you know what? Uh, can I give an excuse as to why? No, I can't give an excuse as to why I'm not going to do my talk. Because I have an obligation to my students. I promise this. I said, this is what I do. And if I've said, this is what I do, guess what, guys? This is what I do. Thank you, Phil. You know what? And guess what? I, too, have a mentor. We all need mentors because a mentor is someone that's already been to where you are battling to go to, where you are striving to go to. That's why a mentor, in my opinion, is so extremely, so extremely valuable. Another thing I want you to remember, and I heard Will Smith say this, I do remember this for certain, I heard, I heard Will Smith say this. Will Smith said, don't have a plan B because your plan B will become your plan A. 
basically, my interpretation of that is if I'm aiming to cross the river, when I cross the river, burn the bridge. Yeah? I'm not giving myself a way out. Because when you've crossed the river and you've burnt the bridge, guess what? You have to now build what you said you were going to build. Because you've got no choice. You can't go back. You've just burnt the bridge. You haven't got a way out. Your plan B is gone. And if your plan B is gone, guess what? You have to sink every ounce of energy, every ounce of motivation, every ounce of determination into making your plan A now work. And do you know, guys, that the universe starts to move heaven and earth for you when it seems that you are immovable, sorry. When you become decisive, when you've got clarity about what you want to achieve, who starts to notice they have these little strokes of luck, these little pieces of, wow, what a great coincidence. No, it's not luck and it's not coincidence. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. That's what luck is. A lot of us fail to understand that, but luck is when preparation meets opportunity. That's why you've always got to stay on your A game. You've always got, got to be putting forth your best foot to ensure that you have the opportunity to achieve what you want. And when you've decided that this is the only outcome, that this is what I have to achieve, you've got no other option. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. That's another one I want you to write down, guys. Because guess what? These things that you're writing down, they're not for my benefit. They're your own notes. But don't get into the situation where you don't read over your notes. Because if you, read, if you write your notes down and you just put them to one side, you don't ever read them, oh, wow, that is such a cute image. Chantel, your baby's got my attention completely. <laughs> oh, wow, is she tired? <laughs> or is he tired? Because that's a huge yawn. Sorry, guys, I got sidetracked. Kids, I love them. What I'm saying is this, if you do not put your best foot forward, if you do not ensure to make sure that you have one outcome and one outcome only that you are prepared to accept, what will happen is you won't achieve what you want. Life will consistently, consistently throw you curveballs. But the curveballs that life throws you uh, just to check whether you really want what you said you want. They are just to test you. And I'll give you another phrase that I love to say. Warriors are created out of adversity. When you go through tough times, the tough times are there just to make you stronger. Don't crack and sit in the corner and cry and feel sorry for yourself. Because just think about it. What has that actually changed? You've still gone through the tough situation. You've still got to deal with the tough situation. Now you've just wasted a whole lot of energy crying and feeling sorry for yourself. Now don't get me wrong, I know that life sometimes gets really tough and we have to sit in the corner and cry temporarily, but don't stay there. If you sit in the corner and cry, when you finish, wipe your tears, get back up and keep moving forward. Guys, I will be completely honest with you. You guys, you guys know I've been through a tough time. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of others who have been through a much tougher time than me. But personally, I know I've been through a tough time. And in the earlier days, there were times when I would either put my phone on silent or even turn it off, draw my curtains, sit on my setting and cry in my hands. But I personally believe that those tears were a release and they allowed me to recharge, refocus, get up and keep moving. Because as long as you keep moving, guys, you're going to reach that destination. As long as you keep moving, as long as you are determined, as long as you are immovable, as long as you have that energy and strength, you are going to reach that destination. So guys, quickly, just to summarize, we are here to thrive and not survive. Change is inevitable, but growth is a choice. So it's all about how you respond to change. 
Remember, we are the creators of our life. Life doesn't happen to us. And in order to create your life, have a clear vision, have a clear outcome, and have a clear focused intent on what you want to achieve. In order to make you stronger on your journey, have contribution involved in your goal. So make your goal bigger than you are. Have in your goal somewhere where you are helping others and potentially those that you love. Or make it a cause that you want to help. Do something but have contribution involved in what you are doing because that in itself will keep you compelled to overcome and keep you compelled to continuing and moving forward. Guys, remember that persistence will get your goal, but it's only consistency that will keep your goal. And don't have a plan B. Guys, don't have a plan B. If you've got a plan B right now, cross it out, scribble it out, make it so you can't see it. Because when you get to the other side of the river, I want you to burn the bridge. Make it that you've got no way back. Because when you've got no way back, guys, you can only go forward. And in life, as we know, if the universe is consistently spinning on an axis very slowly, you cannot stand still. There is only progress or regress. And if you guys are anything like me, which I would suggest you are because you're on this line, I know you want progress. Guys, my time it ends too quickly. But this is why I do it Monday to Friday. <laughs> guys, all can and will be achieved one step at a time. I am committed to you. How committed are you to yourselves? If you are well and truly committed, I want you to remember, I'm going to be here on this same bad channel tomorrow. Guys, have an incredible day. Thank you for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.